Hello everyone, and I welcome you to the second edition of Book Review with Anita Ituha. So the book we'll be reviewing today is by Gary Chapman, titled The Five Love Languages. I tell you, it's a must read. The languages and their various dialects will be in the comment section. Do well to drop your comments, your suggestions, and books you would like me to review. I would love to hear from you. Now, most persons complain that after marriage or after the wedding ceremony, the love it seemed they had evaporated or disappeared. So I tell you, keeping love alive is a serious business. Over the time, we have encountered one major problem, which is the fact that we've seemed to overlook a fundamental truth that people speak different love languages. And just so you know, for effective communication, the speaker and the listener have to understand each other properly. How do you expect a Yoruba man to understand an Aousa man who is speaking this language? That's not possible, but they can both communicate efficiently using English. Similarly, to be effective communicators of love, you have to be willing to learn your spouse's love language. And also, if you would like to find out the difference between falling in love and the real love experience, and also to know more about your emotional love tank, I would advise you get a copy of the book and read. So I'll move on straight to the five love languages. The five love languages as listed by Gary Chapman are the first one, words of affirmation, we have quality time, we have receiving gifts, acts of service, and physical touch. Now we all know that one way to communicate emotional love is by words. Words build up emotion. So there are some persons that their love language primarily are words of affirmation. You telling them thank you for whatever they do for you, you giving them verbal compliment, it helps to build up their love or makes them feel love. Now in this love language, there are various dialects. We have humble words, we have encouraging words, we have kind words, and many more. Just a verbal compliment from you to your spouse can make the difference. So go about with words of appreciation. You don't know how to use words, but get a notepad. Begin to write down on things you would like to tell your spouse or things you want to appreciate your spouse for doing. So we move on to the second love language, which is quality time. And I tell you, quality time entails communication, connection, togetherness, and quality conversation. Enough of how are you doing, how was your day, what did you eat, sit with your spouse and have hard to hard conversations. Now under this love language, we have two kinds of personalities. We have the Dead Sea and the Babbling Brook. The Dead Sea can be likened to a person that listens but never talks. And the babbling book, a person that always talks but never listens. Now, why dating? They can be compatible. But once they get married, issues begin to rise. Let's move on to the next love language, which is receiving of gifts. And I hear the girls begin to scream, oh, this is my love language. No, because you're a lady does not make your love language automatically receiving gifts. Gifts are visual symbols of love used to express or communicate love. If the love language of your spouse is receiving gifts, you will need to sit down and reevaluate your thoughts on spending money. Now also, you don't need to buy gifts that are very expensive. All you need to do is ensure that whatever you give comes from a heart of love. Now we move on to the next love language which is act of service. And this is you doing things that your spouse will love you to do. Washing the dishes, doing the laundry, helping out in the kitchen and lots more. If the love language of your spouse is act of service, you will need to also sit down and reevaluate your thoughts about the stereotypes of the kind of household chores a man and a woman should do. So we move on to the last love language, which is physical touch. And to the guys, this is necessarily not your primary love language. There are various dialects in this love language. We have hugging, holding of hands, and of course, sexual intercourse. So that brings us to the end of the five love languages. Once again, we have words of affirmation, we have quality time, receiving gifts, acts of service, and physical touch. I trust you've learned so much today and are taking great steps to discover your love language and that of your spouse. Now, if you haven't discovered your love language or you would like to discover it to so have a good relationship with your spouse, there are three things you need to identify. First, identify those things that your spouse does or fails to do that gets to you. Two, identify what you have most requested of your spouse and three identify the way in which you express love to your spouse this could be pointers to your love language thank you so much for watching to the end i trust you've learned a thing or two see you next time till then keep building and keep growing my name is anita itoha